Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. How the druid just walked into the bank with the power of bullshit. So my players just finished robbing a bank that they'd been working on for a few sessions now, and it brought to mind the session a few weeks back where they did their final casing of the bank. The party of four split into two teams for the job. Kenku and Warforge bought suits and walked in the front door, lying their asses off that they were safety inspectors doing a surprise inspection. Due to some quick thinking and forge papers, this actually worked and got them a tour of the facility. Warforge is making notes on supposedly real security safety infringements, such as candles being too close to carpets being a fire hazard. Ironically, they ended up setting the bank on fire today as a distraction, so... Guess that risk wasn't total BS after all. Meanwhile, our elven druid decided that was boring, and went exploring. Elf decides to climb the fence into the bank's back area, where they do the loading, and are instantly spotted. When asked what the hell they were doing, Elf replies with, I'm testing your security, duh. And rolls deception, 19. This process repeats four more times, each time more BS than the last. You'll get higher reviews if I contest all the security, if you don't let me go then I'll get you fired. Comma and so on. Somehow this keeps working, despite Zem having plus one in deception and persuasion. Meanwhile, lizard folk, who joined that session and worked at a bank, is following the suspicious elf as he's the only member of the entire staff to make a bullshit detection check on elf. A combination of good roles, fast talking, and total bullshit ends with elf standing before the main vault of the bank, which held a very nice scarf that was totally not a baby noodle dragon. What are you talking about? Comma two floors below the surface. Z do not make the check to blindly open the vault however, and are forced to hide. By bad luck, aka, I thought it'd be funny, this is when the tour that Kenku and Warforge were on brought them to that floor. More quick thinking, and a bit of thaumaturgy from Kenku, convinced lizard folk to go back upstairs to look for elf. Somehow elf continues to avoid detection, turning into a cat and trying to take the service elevator. Unfortunately, their tiny kitty arms were not strong enough to push the lever that controlled it. But Warforge was nearby, said that was his cat, and took the elevator out while Kenku finished his inspection. Lizard folk ends up being fired from the bank due to coming in on his day off and telling the bank manager that a cat was robbing it. He was underpaid anyway, and is surprisingly on board with robbing his former place of work. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Be me. Huge fan of D&D, but never get to play cause lack of friends, internet, etc. Had an old second player's handbook from stepdad and read it nearly every day for a year. Fast forward some years. It's 2020, and living with couple bros. Bro number 2 brings one of his bros over, who plays D&D. Bro number 3 offers to DM. Begin homebrew campaign with 3 bros. Feels good. PNG. Roll good stats, only one of them fairly low. Never played 5th edition, or read the books before. On a sheer random decision. Choose Barbarian. Stat dump int. Decide he's stupid enough to talk bad, and rarely use two syllable words. Name him Mur. Be Mur, level 1 Barbarian. Be not Mur, an elf monk, and a gnome bard. Begin adventure. Find bridge in a forest. Party attacked by two beastmen and two skeletons. Roll initiative. Mur's turn. Roll nat 20 to hit. DM says his kill shot, 
So how do you do it? Tell him I cut him in half, but vertically. From brains to balls. Party and other beastmen stare in horror as blood goes everywhere. Mur screams. Mur hates furries. Other beastmen flees, and skeletons are easily wiped. Little later. Party manages to kill Ogre who lived in nearby cave. Looting time. Mur gets ivory pauldrons of spooky aura, plus 4 to intimidation rolls, plus 1 to AC, and doesn't count as armor, so barbarian and armored defense still active. In back of cave, follow a tunnel. Leads to big open chamber, with some grill inside. Grill fly, which sucks for Mur. Light bulb. PNG. Ask DM if I can make athletics check. DM says yes. Roll 17, plus STR mod plus prof bonus. Ask if I can hurl battle axe's ranged weapon at the grill, due to high strength. But Mur has hand axes he can throw. Mur likes big axe. DM allows it. Kill grill with thrown battle axe. Mur hates beak brain. Fast forward some months. Mur is brought to a one shot. Insert level 3 Mur, a half orc barbarian that is Mur's half brother, and a half elf sorcerer who is also Mur's half brother. Dad got around. All three brothers meet at dad's deathbed. Dad tells of an old castle he always wanted to loot its treasure, but never could. Death. PNG. The brothers agree to go to the castle. Enter castle grounds. No biggie. Perception checks finally hit the money. Notice adult black dragon resting atop a tower. Q and 7, and bravery 20 mer. You. Mer kill you. Dragon wakes up, and flies down, landing with a crash. Roll initiative, and prepare for TPK war. Roll high on attacks, and dragon rolls mostly low. Actually fuck it up, DM says we got it to about half health. Dragon stops rolling low. Mer goes down in spray of acid breath. Half orc gets chomped on. Half elf flees to no avail. Mer succeeds death saving throws. Crawls into old building. Pack of snakemen with bows drawn. TF2 scout think fast chutlinets. Jif. Mer stands up. Help Mer kill dragon. Roll persuasion. Nat 20. Snakemen are enslaved by dragon and want freedom. Dragon distracted with elf and half orc in their death throes. Sneak attack crit from 4-6 snakemen with poison arrows. Dragon dies in one round. Snakemen leave, and Mur goes to his brothers. Both failed their death saving throws. Mur makes vow of vengeance against all dragon kind. Doesn't even loot castle, just leaves. Swears to never fail again. Fast forward some more months. At one point, never continued campaign. Keep Mur's sheet. Start playing with friends on Discord. Friend with username member starts to DM1. Ask if I can use Mur. DM allows it. Small brain for the win. Completely homebrew setting again, from someone with a very good imagination, and almost no experience with D&D. After some adventuring, party consists of Mur, another barbarian who is half orc obsessed with tridents, an elf cleric, a tiefling rogue, an elf fighter, a human rogue, and a changeling warlock. Party is now level 8. Tasked with killing evil guy, and retrieving artifact of the gods. Go to place, fight bad guy. Tough fight, but win. Party can't find artifact. Mur cuts open bad guy and checks inside. Finds a pen. Party realizes this is an artifact. Mur is illiterate, and doesn't like pens. As one of his character trays, he fiddles with things when he's bored, which is essentially any time he's not fighting things. Mur fiddles with the pen. Tell DM, Mur would like to break the pen. DM. Are you sure? Yes. DM, roll a strength check at disadvantage. MFWI roll 2 nat 20s. DM pauses, and after a long sigh, describes the old castle falling apart with an earthquake. Party escapes. The pen was artifact of the gods, and somehow bound to their immortality, and to the entire world itself. Party sees many natural disasters occurring across the land, as massive chunks of the ground being to raise into the sky, turning all the towns into floating islands. 
MFW Mer caused a cataclysmic event because he was bored. Since the gods are now killable, and many of them are evil, the party reasons they should go kill the gods. Insert the boat. Magicians of the cities quickly took regular water boats, but enchanted them to sail in the sky. Think treasure planet, but no tech, only wizardry. Party gets a boat. Sailing flying. Party has some big magic crystals from previous bad guys place. Mug grabs one, since he's nosy. Oh fuck not again. PNG. Ma hears voice in his head, calling him weak, too weak to save his own brothers. Ma rages. Mer demands voice show itself. Come outside and face me then. Mer goes onto top deck, sees massive fucking black dragon. DM says this is mother of all dragons in this world. It flies around the ship, roaring. Party readies for TPK. Mer jumps. Party is confused. I tell DM, Mer jumps when the dragon is below the ship, to hop onto its back and attack it. DM. That's too cool to not allow you to try, roll attack roll at double disadvantage. Roll 3d20. All nat 20s. DM describes Mer sinking his axe into the dragon's head, and half beheading it as they fall down, landing in a massive lake. Mer survives, albeit barely. Another win for the Mer. Time to fight the gods. Goes fairly well, until last evil god is left. God is Riss, the god of rage. Basically Uber Barbarian. Makes the party get enraged enough to fight each other. Mer vs God 1v1. It's a tie. Both die. Party snaps out of it. Sees death arrive to claim the souls. Death fails to take Riss's soul, as Riss returns to life, and flees instantly. Death fails to take Mer's soul, as Mer's head reattaches, and he wakes up. DM messages me privately. That for future plot purposes, Mer is now immortal, and will never age. Cool beans. PNG. Fast forward even more months. New campaign. Ember is DM again. Use Mer again, though brought back down to level 7 with the rest of the new party, as they had all reached level 20 in the previous campaign. Be Mer. Be not Mer. Dragonborn Warlock. Tiefling Ghost Druid. Human Bard. Human Oathbreaker Paladin, Tiefling Ranger, Human Rogue, Human Paladin. Start helping nearby kingdom. Learn King is secretly a black dragon. MR Incredible It's Showtime. PNG. Do some side questing, level up some. Fight King. Win. Party member picks up weird amulet. Wind up returning to previous city from last campaign. Find old party members. Human Rogue is grandson of last human rogue. Old Rogue, Mer, you haven't aged a day. Mer simply never noticed, and it's the first time someone's told him. Shrug it off, who cares. Evil voice talking to Mer again. No one else is it. It's coming from the weird amulet. Mer gets it from other party member, and talks back at it. He looks crazy. Amulet goes kaboom. Mer passes saving throw and manages to save a couple of NPCs. MFW the rogue's grandpa, dad, and mom all died in the blast. Mer tries to tell them it was the amulet. Nobody believes him. Mer goes off to be alone. Party gets old paladin character to try and bring Mer in, figure he's a high enough level he can take him. Paladin detects evil from Mer. Mer no longer has Mer's voice. Mer's eyes are a bright red. Mer 2 shots the paladin. Oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck. MP3. Not Mer says Riss shall return, and steps through a portal. MFW Mer is possessed by the god of rage. Party now has to stop Riss, and hopefully free Mer. MFW due to life circumstances, we stop playing D&D. Fast forward a few months. Everyone's about to be ready to jump back in. MFW when the fate of Mer shall finally be revealed in the coming days. Sorry so long, no short version, just read it or don't. I don't really use Reddit, I just wanted to share the story of Mer somewhere. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos.
Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.